Dad. You promised. <laughs> I will show you if you don't tell anyone. Who would I tell, Freddie? I promised the magnificent Vital Motion Plus. Hmm. Here, try it out. Oh, I don't know. It's harmless, my dear. It's totally harmless. Actually, it will do you power of good. And how does it do a person good, Freddy? You need not worry about the principle of the thing. Just hop in. Are you sure? You won't regret it. Hmm. I promise. But to experience the real benefits, the electrodes should be applied next to flesh. Oh. If you dare, my beauty. You really know how to persuade a woman. <laughs> Doctor, sir. Good morning, George. What wonderful digs. Oh, look at this. Splendid view of the city. Thank you, George. Uh, what brings you here this morning? Well, sir, pardon the interruption. Uh, you're needed. There's been a murder. Oh, I see. I'll fetch my bicycle from the hotel stables and meet you at the scene. Well, you shouldn't need your bicycle, sir. The murder was here, in room 206. When was the body found? Early this morning, my maid. She's quite distraught, apparently. Sir, so the victim appears to have been electrocuted. Some unfortunate mishap. Well, that would account for the power outage we experienced last night. And if that is the case, the time of death would be shortly before midnight. What do we know about the victim, George? His name is Frederick Longfellow. From his effects, it seems he's a, a businessman and a scientist. He's in Toronto for the big medical exhibition and emporium that opens today. I believe this device is the thing he's trying to sell. I found a registration form in his room. This is in his room? Well, I found a, a, a key in his pocket for 209. All right, then. Search this room and leave the body in the device for Dr. Grace to examine at the morgue. Sir. Mansfield? Good morning, Detective. Good morning. Uh, your mail, sir. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Terrible business upstairs. All in all, too much excitement for one night, wouldn't you say? Indeed. I need to know who room 206 was registered to. Mm. Mm. Strange. Page has been torn out. I'll need to take this. Yes, yes, of course. I'm glad you're in charge, sir. I should, um... I... Is something wrong, Mr. Mansfield? For your ears only, Detective. Of course. Mr. Longfellow came to the hotel last night in the company of a woman. Now, a respectable establishment such as ours frowns upon a gentleman escorting a woman to his room. However, Mr. Longfellow slipped me a sizable sum to look the other way. Did you see his companion? Yes, I did. Can you describe her? She was a striking woman, jet black hair, almost exotic. And you're quite sure he was electrocuted? He absolutely was. His heart had stopped. It would seem this machine killed him. These burn marks match the oval shape of the electrodes on the machine. Hmm. Well, that's odd. What's that? Well, this current isn't enough to kill anyone. It's perfectly safe. I'll have to take it for further testing. 
Oh. Oh, my. <laughs> Edna. What brings you to the station? Well, I wanted to ask a favor of you. For Simon? Uh, what's he doing now? Oh, no, nothing like that. He's expressed this interest to go to the Traveling Medical Emporium. Oh. It's a little morbid, I guess, but I'm trying to encourage all law-abiding interests in the boy. <laughs> well, how can I help? Well, I've been offered a job that I can't turn down. So you'd like me to take him? Yes. Edna, does Simon find it odd that we spend time together while... I mean, he doesn't know his father is dead yet. I do know that I have to tell him I'm just waiting for the right moment. Do you want to take him? Yes, of course. I'd be happy to. Thank you, George. find any finger marks in room 206? Yes, sir. I'm cataloging them now. It may take some time before I figure out who they belong to. All right. Please pull up Thomas Edison's finger marks from our records. Edison, sir? Yes, George. Room 206 was registered to Thomas Edison. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. What have I missed? We are debating how we best persuade the good men of Toronto to cast their votes for the fairer sex. Hello, I'm Lillian Moss. Margaret has attracted me to your cause. Oh, pleased. I'm Emily Grace. Another doctor, Lillian. Emily's the city coroner. <sighs> I'm already flattered by the company I'm keeping. Oh, don't sell yourself short, Lillian. You've already been of great service. Lillian is a fellow member of the Socialist League. They've offered to run Julia as a candidate. Am I not too well healed for the Socialists? Yes. What about the Liberal Party? A oh, woman as a Liberal candidate in Ontario. Never. Perhaps I should run as an independent. Unfettered by affiliation. Are you sure, Dr. Ogden? I think I am. My uncle is sympathetic and a prominent Masonic Lodge member. He's keen to meet you. A socialist with connections to the Masons, no less. I've learned to get ahead in this world. You take friends no matter where you find them. And I'm much more interested in women than I am in society's conventions. Macaroon? Excellent roast beef, Mr. Mayor. And the Yorkshire pudding was spectacular. You can always count on a Mason meeting for a good lunch and a dollop of gossip, Brackenreed. Uh, some of which falls in your bailiwick, I believe. Really? You're a detective, uh, the Catholic? Murdoch. What about him? I hear his wife has some notion of running for office. Ludicrous idea. Not good for him or breaking the law. Last thing your boy needs. Is she breaking the law? Not the letter, I gather, but certainly the intent. Have a word. He's gaining a reputation. You mean she is? No difference. They are man and wife, are they not? Good day. Sir, the hotel room was registered to Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison? Seriously? What's he doing in Toronto? I have no idea, but it stands... He's not here for that medical carry-on, surely. That thing's only one step removed from those traveling medicine shows with a snake oil salesman. Sir! What have you, George? You're right, sir. Edison's finger marks were in room 206. What's more is they were all over that contraption. Longfellow electrocuted, and Edison knowing a thing or two about electricity. Makes sense. Except for the murder bit. Have Longfellow and Edison ever crossed paths before? They did, sir. They had a business relationship of sorts a couple of years ago. I'm still looking into the details. Business partners? That's never been motive for murder before. Time to have a word with the gent. Carry on. Oh, well, Mr. Edison. Detective Murdoch. What can I do for you? 
I'm here to bring you in for questioning regarding the murder of your former partner. Mr. Longfellow was found electrocuted in your hotel room. Your finger marks on the murder weapon. That was not my hotel room. Your signature is in the register. Did you remove the page to conceal your involvement? It was not my hotel room. Sir, I have your signature. I demand your cooperation. That's not my signature. It's my son's. Thomas Alva Edison, Jr. My son has learned to copy my signature rather well. It can be quite convenient to be mistaken for your famous father. He adds Junior as an afterthought. Consider it. Mr. Edison, why were your finger marks found on the electrical device? I was in room 206. I saw Longfellow. He was already dead. What time was this? After midnight, 12.30. Why did you not report the murder? What would be the point? You felt no obligation? No. Oh, perhaps you didn't because you thought your son responsible. That's why you tore the page from the register, to protect him. <sighs> My son is capable of many things, but not murder. What was the nature of your relationship with Frederick Longfellow? He would bring me inventions, hoping the Edison Company would invest in their commercialization. Most of these were useless. Yet you still formed a company with him. Why was that? One invention had merit. A new light bulb filament. Longfellow and I formed a company to patent it two years ago. Last time I saw him. Anything else? Yes, Mr. Edison. Why are you in Toronto? I'm looking for my son. Oh, well then, it seems our interests have converged. Where might we find him? I believe he's working for the Traveling Medical Emporium. He's paid by so-called inventors to lend the Edison name to their useless products, sullying my reputation in the process. Dr. Grace, Miss Moss. Lillian, please. I hope I'm not intruding. I don't think you're disturbing anyone. <laughs> I came to tell you that Dr. Ogden made a very good impression with my uncle. She has his vote. Though I'm not sure about his fellow Masons. Julia is very impressive and has always been an inspiration to me. You're a doctor as well. You're both inspirations. Could I take you for tea? Oh, I'd be delighted. <laughs> Son, look at this. <laughs> look! Oh, sorry. Arthritis, catar, ailments of the blood, the spleen, and liver. The Magno Electric Vitalizer aids in all manner of illness. And you can surely trust a product endorsed by Thomas Elba Edison. I personally examined the vitalizer and indeed tried it with excellent results. I wanted to see. Thomas Edison is a famous inventor. This must be his son following in his footsteps. My father was a blacksmith before he went off to the war. That's an admirable train. I used to watch him work. Do you think he'll fall on his path? Me, no. It's too hot and sweaty. And where's the money in forging horseshoes? Even on my youthful head, as a result of daily use. And a finer head of hair I have yet to see, Mr. Edison. <laughs> Step up, who wants one? Look at this. Look at this orb! Ah. This device is a modern marvel. One that can complete complex tasks a cosmetic prosthetic cannot. <laughs> See how the hand moves like that, son? It's like an automaton. Nobody would mess about with me if I had an arm like that. I'd, I'd be a mechanical man. Yes, but think about it, you'd have to cut one of your own perfectly good limbs off. Well, so what? The electrical arm is far more useful. A tool? A, 
A deadly weapon as part of your own body. I suppose it might come in handy. <laughs> well, what would you rather cut off, Constable? Your left or your right arm? Well, so you think the left, because I'm right-handed. But there are a lot of variables you need to consider. For example, I'm sure it's what you need. And perhaps your hair is fine for the moment. Excuse me, Mr. Edison Jr.? Yes. Detective William Murdoch, Toronto Constabulary. I'd like to have a word. Uh, of course. What is this about, Detective? Where were you last night? Last night? I believe I was in a tavern. Who were you with? Mr. McBride, whom I work with. Uh, Mr. Rico from the booth across the way also joined us. What of it? What's going on? I, a misunderstanding, I'm quite sure. Tell the detective where I was last night, Mr. McBride. Uh, Rico and I took him out drinking. I was persuading him to come work with me and not that charlotte and longfellow until what hour i'd say mr edison here staggered out of the tavern around 11 just before perhaps well oiled too singing and carrying on as i told you mr edison i'd like you to accompany me to the station house please is that is that necessary yes yes it is thank you for coming in dr ogden you wanted to speak to me? Yes, yes, I do. Please, have a seat. <laughs> at the Masonic lunch, there was talk about you being a candidate at the provincial election. I trust I can count on your support, Inspector. A word in your ear, Doctor. It's already caused quite a stir. <laughs> well, that's exactly our intention. What we hope is... There'll be serious consequences. Naturally. Any attempt by women to raise their voices beyond a polite murmur is a challenge to almost It's every... not the woman's right to vote claptrap that I'm talking about. Although I am happy to offer an opinion on another occasion. No, this is about Murdoch. William and I have discussed my decision. He completely understands. I'm not sure he does. Inspector, what is this about? Now that you're married, Doctor, the world sees you differently. You're his property. And whether you like it or not, your actions are his actions. That is not how William and I view our marriage, as you well know. Listen to me. You making a public spectacle of yourself will not sit well with Murdoch's political masters. <sighs> and legitimately standing for political office is not a spectacle, sir. Oh, for God's sake, woman. Be realistic for once. This is none of your affair, Inspector. Mr. Edison, how did you know Frederick Longfellow? I lent the Edison name to his latest invention, the Vital Motion Plus. And when did you last see him? Yesterday. I left him at the exhibition hall before I met up with McBride and Rico. Well, yes, you work for Mr. McBride now. Why is that? My name sells their products like hotcakes. Frederick was not giving me the respect I felt I deserved, so I took McBride's offer. Detective, why are you asking me these questions? Frederick Longfellow was found murdered in your hotel room. My hotel room? That's, Im that's impossible. Out of my way. Do you know who I am? Is my son under arrest? Mr. Edison, um, he's assisting me with my inquiries. And I trust you'll have no objection to me joining your interview. Come on, chop, chop. This is bewildering. I just answer the detective's questions. Mr. Edison, how did your finger marks come to be on Mr. Longfellow's device? What of it? Well, the man was electrocuted by his own invention, so I ask again, how did your finger marks come to be on it? The thing was in his room. Of course, he touched it. Before we left for the exhibition hall last evening, I examined the Vital Motion Plus quite thoroughly. I do not lend my name without knowing what it is I'm endorsing. How does the Vital Motion Plus work? A mild current runs through the electrodes. I, I actually gave Frederick a couple of suggestions to help improve the machine's potency, Please but the man thought that he knew better than an machine. Edison is a sham. Did you learn nothing I from me, no boy? no longer in my short trousers, Father. I can make my own decisions. Yes, and destroy the good name of Edison in the process. Gentlemen, if I may, Mr. Edison, Jr., where did you go after you left Mr. McBride and Mr. Rico? 
I actually don't remember. I was in the land of drink. Sir, I'm ashamed to say that this is not the first occasion I've lost time to the bottle. Be quiet. You don't know what you're saying. For man's sakes, Father, I can handle this. I don't need you interfering. Gentlemen, please. Don't you have somewhere important to be? A patent to file, perhaps? If there's nothing further, we're leaving. Thomas, come. You'll be hearing from our lawyer, Detective. Detective! I extracted these fibers from the victim's mouth. A cotton cloth of some kind was stuffed into his mouth and then removed. A handkerchief? There is a second color of fiber, which would suggest a monogram. monogram. Mr. Edison. Mr. Edison, a, a question, if you will. Me? Yes, it would appear that you were the first person to see Frederick Longfellow after his death. What was in his mouth? I don't recall there being anything. You're lying. Answer the question. I don't see how this has anything to do... What are you trying to hide, Mr. Edison? What evidence did you remove from the scene of the crime? That is preposterous, detective. Well, well, well. It would seem I have to arrest you for the murder of Frederick Longfellow. No need. That's my handkerchief. Thomas. I must have misplaced it somehow. Oh, misplaced? I see. I have no doubt that these fibers, which were found in Frederick Longfellow's mouth, will match those of this handkerchief. Mr. Edison Jr., I'm afraid I must detain you on suspicion of murder. Sir, why did you not charge Edison Jr.? Because it troubles me that I can't figure out what caused the deadly current that killed Longfellow. All of these connections appear to be in order. When I was at the medical exhibition, sir, I saw a prosthetic hand that ran on electricity. Fully functional? Yes, sir. Must be the work of a great scientific mind. Sir, it was uncanny. I wonder if the future will allow for electronic body parts to replace our hands or hair. Or... Hair? Well, yes, sir, a toupee of sorts, but if you were frightened, an electric charge would cause it to stand on end. Aha! George, have a look right here. Piece of frayed cloth that matches the sheathing on the AC wire that comes in this side of the transformer. You think it was disconnected? I believe so. That would certainly bypass the transformer. So it must have been reconnected. But not before delivering the deadly current that killed Longfellow. Mr. Edison, I have a few more questions. Detective, I, I don't know how that handkerchief got in Frederick's mouth. You really have no recollection of where you went that night? None at all. I woke up in a tavern in the West End the morning I was to appear at the exhibition. Certainly not a convincing alibi. It's the only one I have. Right then. Um, the Vital Motion Plus requires a transformer. Well, of course. You, you cannot shoot direct current into a machine like that. You'll electrocute the user. Direct current? Don't you mean alternating current? Really, Detective? Direct means directly. Clearly more powerful than a current that goes back and forth. Even someone with a rudimentary knowledge of electricity knows that. I believe you may have this confused, Mr. Edison. A rectifier converts alternating current to direct current. A transformer simply changes the voltage. Does it? Are you sure? Quite sure. To tell the truth, uh, I never really grasped the fundamentals of electricity. But there's no need to share that with my father, is there, detective? He might be, shall we say, disappointed. I trust you got everything sorted, Mel. Sir, I've interviewed Edison Jr. I meant with your wife, the good doctor. Sirs. What have you, George? Edison Jr. has endorsed various devices, my favorite being the solid gold wizard fountain pen. Uh, but nothing seems to warrant a dispute with Longfellow worthy of murder. Could be over anything. Junior's touting for another inventor now. Isn't that enough? Sir, I now don't think that he's our man. The murder was committed by skillfully bypassing elements of the Transformer. I don't think Edison Jr. had the technical know-how to do that. 
Well, what about the evidence against him? The dead man was killed in his room, finger marks all over the machine, and Junior's handkerchief was stuffed in the victim's mouth. All very convenient. Well, what about this mystery lady last seen with Longfellow? Any luck tracking her down? By the clerk's account, dark hair, exotic, perhaps a lady of the night. We're circulating her description now. A needle in the proverbial haystack. Anyway, that's enough for today, gentlemen. Some of us have got wives to go home to. I don't know why the inspector felt the need to interfere. I felt as though I was in front of the headmaster to account for my naughtiness. Mr. Mansfield. Evening, Detective Murdoch. That's what you get for asking him to walk you down the aisle. Unwanted fatherly advice. You should have heard him. Your actions are his actions. Am I to be forever hamstrung by such a backward view of marriage? Let's not let society constrain us, Julia. No matter what the consequences, we're a modern couple living in a modern world. Absolutely. But what consequences do you mean? Will you be censured if I run for election? Oh, tongues will wag, ancient history will be dragged up. But your position is not in jeopardy, surely? I'll steal myself for a strong talking to by the chief constable. There'll be veiled warnings. Warnings? They might dismiss you? Oh, I, I didn't say that. Well, that's ridiculous. My reputation stands for something. And I'm sure the inspector will back me if it comes to that. William, you should not be put in that position. Julia, we're husband and wife. We stand together, no matter what comes our way. I won't be charging your son with murder just yet. Well, that's a relief. Why not? I believe he's been set up. Who would do that? I was about to ask you that very question. Ah, my son has never been particularly discriminating about the company he keeps. I don't know why, but the boy has never applied himself. He's been lackadaisical since his school days. Well, that must be frustrating. Frustrating! I'm at my wit's end. Sorry I can't help you, Detective. Do you have any other leads? Yes, we're looking for the woman that was last seen with Mr. Longfellow. Quite likely a prostitute. <laughs> that woman was no prostitute, I can assure you of that. Why do you say that? Longfellow was too cheap to pay for a woman. At the beginning of any exhibition, he'd find himself a pretty young demonstrator to consort with, and he'd drop her like a hot potato when the next crop of young girls came by. Dreadful habit. Sir, while these ladies are quite fetching, none of them really match the description of our mystery woman. Right. I suggest we split up, George. You take this side of the pavilion. Sir. Detective! When will I get Thomas Edison back? My sales have plummeted without him. Mr. Edison is currently a guest of Station House Number 4 and will remain as such until this investigation is concluded. Then what are you lot doing wandering around here? Sir. Just a moment, George. Actually, we're looking for a woman who was seen with Mr. Longfellow. Sir. Perhaps an employee of the Emporium. Sir! She's right there. Oh. Good work, George. This tincture is guaranteed to heal all small cuts and aid in the removal of warts and other blemishes. <clears throat> Excuse me, miss. Detective Murdoch, Toronto Constabulary. What can I do for you? What is your name? Anna Rico. Miss Rico, you are Mr. Rico's daughter? Yes. Why are you not working at his booth? I am employed by the Emporium, not just one booth owner. Huh. You knew Frederick Longfellow? Yes, I met him when he was setting up here. Such terrible news. You were seen with him the night he died. He took me for dinner. And then? He suggested a nightcap at his hotel. And you went? He seemed to be a gentleman, and I suppose I was flattered by the attention. What happened once you were at the hotel? Frederick tipped the hotel clerk to look the other way, and we went up to the rooms. He wanted to show me something. Anna? Detective? What is happening? I have a few questions for Miss Rico. What kind of question? I should get back to work, if you don't mind. Please, Miss Rico, continue. Speak up, man. We walked into a hotel room. 
The machine he had invented was there. He wanted to show it to you. I think, rather, he was trying to seduce me. I'm sorry, Papa. I, I should not have gotten that name. What happened after that? I was about to get into the machine. There was a knock at the door. Another man came in. He was very drunk. I began to think it was not such a good idea to be in a hotel room with two men, so I left. This man that came to the hotel, would you recognize him? Answer, Anna. You have to tell the detective everything you know. Yes, I recognized him. He works here at the exhibition. Who is he? Thomas Edison, Jr. In light of this new information, your son will have to remain in custody, Mr. Edison. I see. I've arranged for a good lawyer. Um, would you like to see him? I don't think so. It's a matter for the courts, no? It's a hard pill to swallow discovering your son's a murderer. Sir, I'm convinced there's more to this. You can't argue with the evidence now that there's an eyewitness. Are you sure you're not being blinded by his pedigree? Uh, sir, there are several possibilities. For example, Anna Rico also works for Mr. McBride. Longfellow's rival. The two of them could be up to something. Have Crabtree see what he can come up with on her. Though I doubt you'll find anything. Sometimes it's just what's in front of you. Sir. Murdoch, did my word with the doctor sink in? Julia told me you spoke with her. Good. So it's sorted. Very much so. I fully support her decision to run. I'm gonna give this to you straight, Murdoch. Your wife's actions are jeopardizing your position within the constabulary. Sir, the world is changing. So I'm bloody told. I know you've married a firebrand, and she's the persuasive type. But you're a husband. What you say goes. Wear the trousers for once, man. This matter is closed. I'll look into Anna Rico for you, sir. We can have a poster of Julia dressed as Liberty. Oh, come on. You don't like the idea of Liberty? It's stirring. Very Bodicea et al. A female warrior. That I like. A warrior princess. Oh, no. She doesn't have to be a princess. Emily, hello. Miss Moss, am I interrupting? Not at all. We were just going over some ideas for your publicity. Is something wrong? Actually, I came to tell you that I'm withdrawing from the election. What? I think it's for the best. I bring a lot of controversy with me. Well, why does that matter? It's about taking a stand. I really feel quite strongly about this, Emily. I'm not the right candidate. Will you give us a moment? Julia. Why are you giving up so easily? I'm not giving up. It just need not be me on the campaign poster. This is about the detective, isn't it? Let me guess, he doesn't approve. On the contrary, he completely supports my running. He's almost more enthusiastic than I am. Then what is the problem? What I do directly impacts upon William. I have to take that into consideration. If you weren't married to him, what would you do? Emily. This matter is closed. When a woman marries, she loses a piece of herself. So it seems. I do know a place that will serve a woman a good stiff drink. Then I would like to know where that place is. Anna Rico. I don't know any Anna Rico. What are you asking me for? She claims you arrived at the hotel room not half an hour before Mr. Longfellow was murdered. Why would a woman I've never met lie about me? I must have been there. Maybe I am your killer, detective. Well, the evidence certainly points towards you, Mr. Edison. Are you sure you remember nothing? Sadly, I don't. Has my father asked about me? He hasn't visited. He's arranged for a good lawyer for you. Of course he has. You wouldn't want the Edison name sullied. Sir, I've been doing that search you asked for, Rico. It's an uncommon surname, but I found a court document filed a couple of years ago by Giorgio Rico. 
Giorgio Rico. Yes, sir, but it was witnessed by his sister Anna. Now, as it turns out, Giorgio Rico was trying to win back a patent for this uh, uh, long-lasting light bulb filament. He was suing Frederick Longfellow, sir, and Mr. Edison Sr. Of course I remember Giorgio. Good brain. Longfellow brought me his filament invention. And you patented it? Yes. Longfellow and I formed a company and put it into production. Very successful it was, too. And Mr. Rico's involvement? The young man was remunerated for his work, but he did not grasp the business side of things, hence the lawsuit. Do you know where we might be able to find him? Sadly, there was a tragic end after the lawsuit failed. Suicide, I understand. Shame, really. The lad had talent. Gentlemen. I almost feel sorry for Julia with a father like that. With her brother's tragic death after a failed lawsuit, that would certainly give Anna Rico motive for murder. It would indeed. Sirs, I spoke to Mr. Mansfield, the desk clerk. He confirms that Anna Rico was in the hotel lobby at the time of the power outage at quarter to midnight. He didn't see anybody else of note coming or going that night. Thank you, George. So she's not our murderer. Edison Jr. did it. Well, sir, there is another possibility. Anna Rico could be involved. How? Well, she could easily have lured Longfellow into his machine. Once strapped in, let someone else into the room. Someone who may have had reason to want Longfellow dead. Why for him Edison Jr.? He had nothing to do with the business dealings that caused the brother's suicide. That was Edison Sr. Sir, if you want to truly punish a man, you take his son. Mr. Rico, you took advantage of Edison's weakness for drink, knowing that he would remember nothing. Your daughter Anna let you into the room where you rigged the machine to electrocute Longfellow, leaving behind a trail of clues you knew we would find, including an eyewitness. Why, Mr. Rico? Giorgio. He was a genius. I joined a traveling exhibition, selling my words like a common showman to support him. He took over my workshop. The electrical limb was his invention. The filament for the light bulb was another. His life was just beginning when it was cut short by the greed of those men. Mr. Rico, you are under arrest for murder. You! You would have seen my son hang for murder! You killed mine. What? I did no such thing! You took his life as much as if you had tied the rope around his neck yourself. Why, my son? Why not me? I wanted you to know how I feel. To grow old without your beloved boy at your side. What greater pain can there be than to lose one son? Take me away, detective. I am ready. Mr. Edison? You're free to go. Thank you, detective. Goodbye, father. I would like to wish you well. Then do so. Is it so hard? Have you learned nothing from your time in the cells? Yes, that my father would leave me there to rot. Patently untrue. Tell him, detective. Gentlemen, given the tragic circumstances surrounding this case, Perhaps it would be a good idea for you to come to some sort of civilized arrangement. I can see no way forward while the boy insists on using the Edison name to endorse worthless products. I have to live. I cannot do so without an income. Oh, what do you suggest my, that you I You paid attention at school. Perhaps oh, I can help find a compromise that's acceptable to both parties. Like what? <clears throat> Perhaps Mr. Edison Jr. would be willing to not use the family name in business in exchange for a monthly stipend. That might be acceptable. How healthy a stipend? I'll have the details drawn up. 
Good day, detective. I'm sorry things couldn't end on Now that I'm no longer shackled to the Edison name, what do you think of Thomas Willard? That's a perfectly good name. Perhaps Burton Willard has more authority. Also good? Burton Willard. I can see that name splashed across a billboard. What an odd pair the Edisons turned out to be. Not what you expect a famous father and son to be like at all. Oh, well, there's no telling, is there? I mean, you never really know what the private lives of public figures are like. I suppose not. Who knows, maybe young Edison will end up on a career path that doesn't step on his father's. Maybe he'll be a, a beekeeper or something. <laughs> well, from what you describe, it doesn't seem as though he'll succeed at much of anything. Mm. Oh, I just want to step in here for a moment. You two go on? All right. Do you think Mr. Edison Jr. will miss his father? I suspect he might, you know? Who knows, maybe the two will mellow out over the next few years. I would miss my father. I already miss him a lot. Why do you think my mom won't tell me that he's never coming back? What do you mean? She got a letter a couple months ago that made her cry. Did you read it? I know my father's dead. She just won't say anything. Well, that's a very difficult thing to tell a son, Simon. You should tell her that you know already. You think? I do. I think she would be relieved. I think you might feel relieved. Yeah. I should tell her. Do you want to... I don't know. Do you want to give this thing a whack? Yeah. There you are. Give it a good one now. Oh, very nice. Very good. I was so close. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I've got a sore elbow, you see. I don't... <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, who knew? I can't believe it.